In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all-new 2S brushless swoop from Iyashi. Now, this is called the US65, and I think they have an EU one. This is their pro lineup right here, and we're going to discuss its overall flight performance, outdoors, how it flew, and they've also done a couple things slightly differently, which we're going to cover today and see what you guys think of that. So with that being said, let's get started with the accessories and move along down to the flight performance here. So as you can tell out of the box, you do get the carrying case, which is a really nice addition. And there's something to be expected now from Iyashin here. Now, once we pop this open, we actually get quite a bit more accessories than usual. For one, we actually get a power supply or a power adapter or a power brick or whatever you want to call it. And this is a 12 volt, three amp power supply, and that is going to be used for your charger. Now this charger might look very familiar, but it's not. It's because we have these new connectors right here for the batteries because you no longer have these type of batteries. We have this brand new black one right here, which seems to have helped, or at least the performance was pretty crazy. But again, we'll come back to that in a bit here. So you do get the charger, the power brick, you get the quadcopter, and you get four batteries along with the instruction manual. So let me go ahead and show you those. So we also get the OSD remote. We get some tools and this 3D printed square right here, which is gonna be very important and another set of propellers. And you get your batteries. Now, as you can tell, the batteries are using this new type of connector, but there are a couple things you need to take into consideration when you're gonna be working with this, which we're, we're gonna cover in a bit here. And you also do get the quadcopter itself. As you can tell, we have our XSR receiver and we have these new type of connectors. And as you can tell, it takes two S I don't know if it will take 1S, I mean theoretically it can, but they didn't give you that jumper, but you could easily make one if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, they didn't give you the jumper, so I'm only running it on 2S and outdoors actually, and it's pretty good. We're getting into that in a bit here. So for the chargers, the things you need to take into consideration here is when you plug this into the charger, this new type of connector, uh, don't plug it in all the way. And the reason for that is, is because it could get stuck and as you're pulling it, you could actually ruin the battery here or start sliding back the uh, the heat shrink right here. And you really don't want that. So when you plug it into the charger, just put it in and then just give a little small push there to make it easier for you to get back out because you really don't want to ruin your batteries here. So that's something to take into consideration here. Also, these by default were all wrong. They were set to normal LiPo and to switch them to uh, high volt. And if you hold it the same way I'm holding it, you want to switch all of these to the left like that because the R switches. So you want to switch them all to the left and these ones you want to switch them up. Uh, up basically means it'll allow it to charge at 0.5 in an amp, half of an amp. And the lower part of this one, if you put it to the bottom, it'll charge at 0.2. I usually just charge at 0.5, it's just so much faster. When they're finished charging, they'll blink really fast and you know it's finished charging. While it's charging, the LED will stay on. The LED is next to the port right there. You can see those little white stuff. Those are the LEDs right there. So that's really nice. You also have a USB output if you need that. So that's something to take into consideration with this. So now let's look at the quadcopter here. So to fly the quadcopter, you really need that 3D printed part here. And like, what the hell is that 3D printed part used for? Well, this is supposed to be flown on a 2S. And if we flip it over, what we have is we just have a 1S port right here. So how the hell are you going to put a second one in? You can't, you know, put them up straight. So the way you're supposed to do this is actually grab the, the 3D printed part and install one battery. And usually it's pretty simple. Sometimes it's a little bit annoying, especially when the, uh, the little sticker comes off the battery. So just like that, now we have one battery in, and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and bring in your second battery, and you could just put that right there. And that's, that's a smooth fit. Very tight fit, I mean, very nice, but I think they should have probably thought of a different way, but this is usable. But again, if you lose that piece right there, it's gonna be a bitch for you to figure out a way to set up both of those batteries right there. And as you can tell, we have those are being starting to be exposed. I really like this connector. I think it outputs a lot of power, but I really don't like the execution of these connectors. Uh, I wish there was some sort of a protective layer 
over this part right here somehow some way uh, to make these a little bit better right there but um, yeah, other than that, they work really great. So let's go ahead and talk about the quadcopter. Now for the camera, they're using the Cadex Nano, uh, Ant, the Ant Nano. And I was actually quite surprised with the quality that uh, it was outputting. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And you guys probably seen it in the beginning of the video. And again, you'll see the raw flight footage towards the end of the video. So in that perspective, that's really good. Now again, for the video transmitter here, what they've done is they've done it inside the, uh, the, the flight controller itself. So the flight controller is the ESC video transmitter and and that, that's it the esc the flight control and the video transmitter yeah that's what the flight controller does here and this is the antenna for the video transmitter and it had pretty decent range especially in the bando so in that in that perspective i give it like an eight out of ten in terms of um the you know the, the general the average type of whoops that i get so i really like the range on that and it does also reduce weight since the uh the video transmitter is going to be built in however the receiver is not built in and they're going to supply you with whatever you choose. However, I got the RXSR uh, variant. So you can tell it right there, right there on the bottom. Very easy to buy and just click it and you're good to go. Uh, the range was really good, especially on the controller. And the video transmitter part was pretty good as well. The overall range in terms of a brushless whoop, I would just say about average, probably slightly maybe above average. So that was good into that perspective. And again, they're using their brand new motors here again. These are, they're, they're saying these are different. These are going to be more powerful. Um, it, it does seem to be more powerful than usual. Now, one thing I do tend to notice is that when the, if you, you can fly this for about two minutes and a half or so, really aggressively like I was. However, once you go above two minutes and the battery starts getting a bit low, um, you can have that, the, the yaw washout, like it just, you know, it just it doesn't have enough power to keep its attitude at times. And it'll do like a weird yaw twitch, not a weird, weird yaw twitch. It'll just lose control and come back, you know, get, get its position. But that's when the, uh, battery starts draining pretty low and you should actually land by then anyways. So that's something I noticed it happened a couple times towards the end of the battery. And especially when you're flying outdoors, indoors, I didn't have any of that. But I was really flying it aggressively outdoors. And I was actually quite surprised at the performance I got outdoors with this, uh, which was really, really nice. So I really hope the price is good. I forgot how much it costs. Again, it's down below. And um, yeah, so overall, it was a really, really good flyer in my opinion. I did crash a couple times. Uh, no damage, but you can expect damage. These are plastic. They all These all break. And again, the, the parts availability is going to be very, very high and also very, very cheap as well. So you could easily buy replacement whenever you need. And if we take a look at the motors here, in terms of repairability, very simple. Just plug and play uh, motors you can set up right there. You don't really have to solder anything. Like if you break a motor, you just unplug it and then plug in a new one, break a frame. Just unscrew like five screws and you're good to go. So yeah, it was a really nice brushless swoop. I'm not really a big fan of brushless swoops, but I did have a ton of fun with this. I give it a 7.9 out of 10. So it was really good in my opinion. I had no weird issues with this and it just uh, worked really great out of the box. The range was good. The quality was good. There was no noise and um, I just enjoyed it. And I hope that's going to be the case with you as well. And well, I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. I'll have the raw flight footage at the end of the video. You can go ahead and check it out and decide for yourself. Let me know what you think down in the comment section, especially with these connectors right here. I think it's really great, but it's gonna take some time for everyone else to adopt these connectors. So the battery, you might have to be buying new batteries or just probably uh, replacing the adapter on your older battery. So yeah, time will tell. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.